What's the word, y'all? For the first time this season, your boy watched close to no basketball. Like, you're like, Kenny, why are you even here talking hoops if you ain't even watched? Listen. <laughs> Once you get around my age, 26 years old, your peers start to get married and stuff. So today we had to go to a wedding. And you know what? Actually, that's kind of cap when I say I watched close to no basketball. I watched the Bulls game. Uh, but I was I was very respectful during the ceremony. Didn't touch my phone. Didn't watch nothing. But once that ceremony was over and the reception started, best believe I was watching my Bulls. And you know what? While we we'll on this topic, let me defend my boy Patrick Williams because my mentions were going crazy after y'all watched him for the first time this season. There is a video I dropped last season. This was last season. One of these type of videos where I said in it, love Patrick Williams, but every time he touches the ball, he shuffles his puppies, but the refs never call it. This is the first game of his career where the refs were actually calling that travel. <laughs> he, he should have learned to be better at that. But this is the first time in his career they called and it happened to be on national TV. In my defense of Patrick Williams, this performance wasn't good, but it was pretty solid compared to what we was getting a week ago. So we take the baby step. Remember, he has played less than 100 games in his NBA career, y'all. Believe it. Uh, the game was fun, but it wasn't very, uh, it wasn't a great watch because there was a hundred different free throws between DeMar DeRozan and Jason Tatum. They got their revenge after earlier this season. That, but that's, that's it. That's all the brother actually watched. That is also a lie. Oh man. Okay. But like when I, when I, when I'd like say watch, I mean like really diving into, I watched the last two minutes of Suns versus Blazers. I'm watching the last couple minutes of Utah versus Lakers. But then again, I'm filming this video. So does it count as watching? And I watched the fourth quarter of Minnesota versus the the bucks i do want this video to be primarily about the bucks i'm going to talk about them not in the context of this game because again i only watched the last couple minutes of it but in general this team is the last undefeated team and i think at the end of this game it said for the first time in the history of their franchise they started off this good and again I, i'm not i'm not taking a victory lap because we ate games to the season but i felt very confident with the idea of the milwaukee bucks being the best team in basketball and winning the championship eventually. I didn't think they were going to be the one seed, though, if you go check my video, because I felt like they were a team that weren't going to prioritize regular season winning. And I thought that since Chris Middleton was going to be off for a little time, they might struggle out of the gate. Completely wrong on that tip. Boy, oh boy, they look like a different team and philosophy, which is funny because throughout the history of Coach Bud's career, whether it be in Atlanta or the first couple years in Milwaukee, his major criticism attached to his name was brother never make adjustments. He gonna run the same thing from game number one of the regular season to game number 82 of the regular season, plus however many playoff games he get. This is what he knows and it's damn good come regular season, but once we get to the postseason, that same scheme and stuff don't really work. Well, this season, it has completely changed and dare I say, because of it, this looks like the best version of the Bucks we've seen in the Giannis era. Again, jumping the gun, considering it's only eight games into it, but this, this is a team that held their hats on. You're not going to score in our paint. We got Giannis as a help defender, and Brooke Lopez down low. We'll let you take all the corner threes you want. This season, no, that's not that's not the case. I got, I got the numbers, y'all. I got the numbers. What we're looking at now is from cleaning the glass. Shout out to him. Not an ad. Um, the amount of threes allowed this season, percentage of the opponent's shots, the Milwaukee Bucks are second in the league, only allowing 31% of the shots that their opponents take being a three, which is different than what we normally see. For example, last season, they were second to last. 41% of the shots that they gave up during that season was from three. This is a complete flip in philosophy. Like this right here is staggering. Like the Miami Heat still give up a ton of threes every single game. Like that's what they do. That's part of their defense. But the Milwaukee Bucks have found a way to prevent their team, the other team from taking threes. And they're preventing their opponent from shooting at the rim. It makes no, they're forcing their opponents to take long mid-range jump shots. And it's working. I, I, again, I don't know how it works come playoff time. Actually, it probably works phenomenally come playoff time. Now that I'm thinking about it. But like, this is what they've been doing this season. And it's it feels sustainable. You know, like this version of their defense might be the best version. And that is saying a lot because the Milwaukee Bucks had been an elite level defense like four out of the last five seasons. Another stat that's different this season compared to others. Right now, they are getting about 13 offensive rebounds per game which is fourth in the league, or I guess tied for third. And in other seasons, they were more middle of the pack at about 10, but more offensive rebounds means more opportunities to score. So 
I, I don't know. I'm really loving what Bud is doing so far this season. And I think there's going to be a lot of coaches in the running for Coach of the Year if everything stays the same. But Bud probably wins it if this defense still continues to be this good for the rest of the season. So shout out to the Bucks. I mean, they still don't even have Chris Middleton yet. They're they're down today. Pat Connaughton, like they're missing quality rotational slash all star caliber talent, and it has not mattered one bit. Drew Holiday has stepped it up on the offensive side of the ball, which is great because a lot of people were talking bad about his name after the playoff series last year when he had to take the number two spot, and maybe he worked on it. He's here for being number two, at least until Chris Middleton comes around. So, boy, oh, boy, are the Milwaukee Bucks very, very, very good. I think tomorrow they play, so I'm going to release this video, and they'll probably lose tomorrow. It's just the way it goes. All right, so I did a video like this last season in a day similarly where I didn't get around to watching the games. I'm going to show y'all how I do this very light recap for days like this. How, how does Kenny keep up with every single game? In, in reality, I do not. It's impossible. When it's a 12-game slip, it's impossible for me to watch every single one of those games. But I'm going to show you that how if you miss a game, you can go out there and you won't get like the nuances of the games. You probably won't get the 16-0 run versus the 12-2 run. Like you won't get those parts but you will be able to get an understanding of the game in a day like this uh, i would just look at the scores and try to figure out hmm, which one of these games do i care about i saw the box score for this Cavs game so i i don't care about it but the fact that donovan mitchell and darius garland both sat and they still won this game i'm very curious i saw the emo had like eight blocks i need to watch those blocks we're going to get into watching possessions. This video probably won't be monetized because the NBA is going to take it because we will watch a, a little bit of film if you want to call it that. Tyler Hero with 29, 5, and 5 with Tyrese at 22, 9, and 9. Two-point game. I want to see what that's about. The Knicks beat the 76ers. Now, when I was at the reception, I was checking the scores of these other games. And late in this game, the 76ers had the lead. So I want to figure out what the hell happened for them to actually end up losing. KD made Daniel Gaffer fall. I saw that on Twitter. But he put up 28, 9, and 11 against the Wizards. I haven't watched this game, obviously. But losing by this much when Kyrie Irving is suspended and Ben Simmons... Is that a plus? Maybe Ben Simmons not playing as a plus for the team. But the fact that it was just KD and, and the others and they lost by 40, uh, maybe not great. I forget who owns the Washington Wizards or who's in charge over there. Can you just tank? How can you watch the Victor Wabanyama's stuff from earlier today where he had 39 points or whatever the hell it was and be like, yeah, we okay with just having Porzingis, who's been good. Porzingis has been really good this season. Don't get me wrong. We were okay with just basically being mid because that's what they are right now. Just, just do it, bro. Just do it for the sake of your fans. So I watched the Bulls game. I have no interest in this one. See, this is the first game where I'm like, absolutely not. I see book. If book night is the leading like game player at 14, four and five, I'm not interested. Steven Adams with 19 boards two days after I dropped him in fantasy is also hilarious. I saw that Paul George is averaging 30 plus points after he told the world that he will be better. So that's kind of fun. Um, and I also saw Devin Vassell had a really good game off the bench. So we'll probably watch Devin Vassell and uh, Paul George's minutes. I'm so mad I didn't watch this game. This was the game that was circled on my like game of the day calendar because I wanted to see the Toronto Raptors disrupt the defense versus Luka. And just looking at the box score, OG Ananobi at 27-7. I think he had five steals again. Um, but Luka, I mean, what? Warriors rested everybody and lost. I'm, I don't really care about that game. I, I, we already talked Bucks. I saw the Jeremy Grant three-pointer, and I see that Russell Westbrook had 28-3-3-6. Three and, three and so shout out to, I, I can't believe that the Jazz are legitimately seven and three right now what how is that even pop they are still doing it and me and the guys were talking like which team between the jazz and the spurs do you think will be able to like keep it up if you want to call it that i said the jazz i don't think either of the two will keep it up not at this rate they're not going to be winning 70 percent of their games you know what i'm saying but i do think that like they have the opportunity to be in the playing race more than like the spurs but okay now that we see the scores and everything i can kind of pick out type of performances i'm curious about this is not a sponsor but i wish it was actually i think this is an independent website bucketlist.fans that is the website and, and sometimes i talk about in videos like watch all of his possessions and everybody's always curious what does that kenny what the hell does that mean watch his possessions this is exactly what i mean they give you the daily performance but you can search in a player's name so who is the player i said i want to see i want to see evan mobley i want to see evan mobley's blocks type in Evan Mobley his box score from today and I just click this and I can watch every single block he had today again this video is definitely getting demonetized but whatever let's let's watch some Evan Mobley situations that's just pure athleticism shout out to Nolan's Noel finally getting on the court um I think it's maybe a second third game on the team and it led to a Jetty Eisman layup so here he is guarding Sadiq Bay in space with the help over 
from behind. There's a there's just like a snatch block. There's Emo. Man. He had eight of these throughout the game, man. This is insane. Oh, there's a fast break. Are you chasing it down? Is he chasing it down? Technically, yeah, technically that counts as a chase down. Bro, Evan Mobley is so fun to watch, bro. I wonder if he finished on that play too, because he was running like a gazelle right there. The fact that these men still kept going up on him when he snatched blocking and, and doing stuff like this is insane. And it led to a Kevin Love three. Come on, man. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. I was so excited to watch Detroit Piston basketball. I made a whole video right before the season started. They've been really bad. Probably better for their organization, but you want to see progress from other players. Oh, my God. Stop going. All right. I've seen enough. I've seen enough. Next to me would definitely be Luka. Um, just curious to what this is about. It started off in the third quarter, which is not normal. It usually starts from the first bucket of the game. Definitely not the third quarter. But this game doesn't look close, but it ended up being close, if you want to call it that. So the Raptors has some type of run that we got to figure out. My favorite thing about Luca. Oh my god. Oh my oh my god. No, he didn't score on this. No, he didn't. Bro, press no, no, no. That's good defense pressures. Like he was stumbling for sure. It's hard not to stumble when this man is doing uh some crazy Harlem Globe try to stuff. But that's good defense. This the turnaround fade might have been an AM1 low key, and he sits on the floor and doesn't look all right, all right. I mean, they were about 20 at this point, basically going into the fourth, and then it's down to a four-point game. So the Raps went on a run. I did see that Pascal Siakam, good shot. Pascal Siakam hurt his groin in this one that he didn't return. This will be the last thing I'll show you what I do. So you know how I mentioned, like, oh, snap, what the, what the heck happened for, for this game to get close after that team was up by so much? I would just, pro I would just go here to, like, figure out where that run started, and then I would watch every May basket slash miss from that run. That's, that's what I would do. Like, how the heck did they come back to this game? I would watch these five, ten minutes or so until we got to the end of the game. So that's that would be how I keep up with these games. It's not a perfect science, but it works, you know? It works if you want to keep... If you watch three games and it's six on a day, you got to catch up to the other ones. You could do that, or you could do this if you have um, League Pass. Actually, you can't do it right now because the game's just ended. But they do, like, these condensed versions, like 40 minutes of the game and you get to watch all the possessions basically anyway that's how i keep up with basketball uh when i don't have the opportunity to keep up with basketball shout out to russ i will watch 100 percent of russ's possessions even though again that was on a little bit um he looked good man love to see russ smiling rocking the baby and stuff they didn't get the win because the jazz are legitimately good basketball team excited for him because th the first or well, i guess the last year and the first week or so of the season was was rough, man. It's definitely rough for Russ. So happy to see him doing okay. Probably be better if they would have won that that ball game. Uh, people are starting dialogues on Twitter about Bron and whether or not Father Time is is here. I know he still was like great, but people are having a conversation: Is he top five in the league? Still, is he top ten? Is he top fifteen? My low was saying he's not even top twenty. I don't know if I would go that far, but conversations are being said about uh, Bron because I mean, at the end of the day, he is human, you know. And they did all these ads about him versus Father Time. And he's still winning the battle. He's about to be 38 and still elite. But Father Time just slowly behind him, you know? All right, that's it.